All right, so now we're going to derive uh, for Gauss quadrature, there are a number of different formulas that we use, and so we'll let, we're just going to start out by deriving the uh, the two-point uh, Gauss-Legendre formula, and then uh, we'll just give you the, the the values that you use for for the three-point and higher formulas. Now uh, we have again uh, I equals uh, c naught f of x naught plus c1 f of x1. Now, the thing is, uh, rather than rather than deriving this for any, um, if, if we if we just did um, if we just did this in general for for anything from from a to b, uh, then um, it wouldn't be as generally uh, easily applicable. So we're, we're going to derive it then, or we would have to, rather, we would have to re-derive it for every single specific A and B. So what we're going to do is we're going to derive this just for uh, the limits of integration negative 1 to 1, and then uh, you can just transform your equation to use those limits of integration. So the integral from negative 1 to 1 of uh, 1 dx uh, and that's going to equal 2. And then we're going to go, and it's going to be the same thing on the left-hand side here. So let's just copy that. Here, let's copy it all the way to there. Got that same thing here. Got that same thing here again. Got that same thing here again because we're going to do it for all of them uh, from uh, we're going to do of uh, x dx and that's going to equal zero because it's balanced and then we're going to do x squared uh, dx and that's going to equal uh, two-thirds which you can verify and then we're going to do x cubed dx which is also going to equal zero. I'm not setting these equal to zero. These are these are what the result of the integral is if you actually do it. And so now uh, this is great because we have four equations and we can sol solve them simultaneously for um, our uh, c naught, c one, and our x naught and x one. And when we do that we get c naught equals c1. That's a really big c. I'll just have to make the next one the same size. C, uh, excuse me, c naught equals c1 equals 1. And we have x naught equal negative 1 over the square root of 3. And x1 equals um, 1 over the square root of 3. Alright, so we have a value of c naught and c1 and x naught and x1 such that when we integrate any of these functions using the trapezoid rule we get um, we get the exact value. So then uh, again this result is true for the limits of integration between negative 1 and 1 and so we have to come up with some method to generalize this so it's true not just for the limits of negative 1 to 1 but for any limits of integration. Well, uh, what we're going to do then is for any uh, anything that we want to integrate, we're just going to transform the limits of integration. And if we transform the limits of integration linearly, uh, then, then we should be good. So we're going to define a new... Uh, so we're going to say x is equal to... And so... Uh, The integral, to make clear what we're doing here, the integral from a to b of f of x dx equals the integral from negative 1 to 1 of oh, I shouldn't say f of g 
of x d dx d. All right, so then we have x equals a naught plus a one x d, and that's our linear transformation. Okay, we don't know what this is in general, but we do know that at our lower limit x d equals um, well not a at our lower limit x equals a and our upper limit x equals b right um, and so we can say a equals a naught plus a one x d and similarly scroll down here uh, a excuse me b equals a naught plus a one x d so here we have two equations um, two unknowns we can solve well and then we have x equals a naught plus a one x d so we solve these two equations simultaneously and get uh, a naught equals uh, b plus a over 2 and we get a1 equals b minus a over 2 and so then we plug that back into this equation and we get x equals uh, b plus a plus b minus a all over 2 and then we can also do uh, dx by taking, uh, uh, um, oh, sorry, that is times xd, because we had to, had to keep this xd in there. And then our dx, uh, we can get that just by taking uh, the derivative of this. So dx equals um, b minus a over 2 dx d which is just uh, take the derivative of this and, and you get you just get this last part so we have a1 uh, a1 xd so that's what this is a1 xd now uh, we can then just use these two these two formulas uh, for our transformation all right just use these two formulas for a transformation and then we can tr transform any equation into uh, into the integral um, from negative 1 to 1. So that allows us to move between any limits of integration a to b to limits of a integration from minus 1 to 1. And uh, that's, that's how it, it proceeds. And then we just need to know the coefficients. And we can look those up in the table as we saw for the two-point uh, integration formula which we just derived those coefficients are x naught uh, equals minus 1 over square root of 3 and x1 equals 1 over square root of 3 uh, we can then do the same thing uh, and and I have a table of values here let me show you. all right so these are the weighting factors uh, and so this is I mean obviously this is right out of your book these, these are the weighting factors and um, we have the, the two point the three point, the four point, the five point, the six point gauss legendre formulas. And you can see the truncation error is very low. Just for the two point formula, we already have um, the, the fourth order, um, the fourth fourth derivative is the, um, the bounding factor on the truncation error. So you know, we get all the way up to 12th derivative uh, accuracy uh, with, with six data points. And so these are very accurate with very few function evaluations if our, of course, if our function, assuming that our function behaves uh, roughly uh, as a polynomial would on, on that interval.